Robert Redford, known as the Magnet of Misfortune, finally opened up and shared his tragic story of nearly nine decades. He seemed crushed by countless hardships, including the pain of loss, illness, natural disasters, and broken marriages. It's all in this video, don't hesitate. Let's start learning about his tragic life right away. In 2011, the renowned actor Robert Redford embarked on a collaborative journey with author Michael Feeney Callan to create an in-depth biography titled Robert Redford, The Biography. This exhaustive biography offered readers an intimate and comprehensive look back on the life of the mega-famous actor, unveiling previously undisclosed and lesser-known aspects of his personal life. One of the most poignant and harrowing revelations in Redford's biography was a recollection from his childhood. In the early 20th century, particularly in the 1930s and 1940s when Redford was growing up, the world was plagued by the devastating disease known as polio. Polio is a contagious viral illness that could lead to severe breathing issues, paralysis, and in many cases, even death, as per the Mayo Clinic. During those years, there was no vaccine available, and polio remained a rampant and dreaded disease. Redford's encounter with polio, however, was a life altering event that he had managed to overcome. He recalled that his case of polio was not as severe as some others who required the use of iron lungs. Instead, it was considered a mild case, yet it was still significant enough to confine him to his bed for a period of two weeks. Redford shared his recollection of contracting the disease, explaining that it occurred after a day of swimming in the ocean. It was during this time that he began to experience the early symptoms of polio, which included difficulty in movement. He woke up one morning unable to move his arms or even open his eyes, which led to the realization that he had contracted this frightening illness. Remarkably, Robert Redford was able to avoid major lasting damage from his bout with polio. This episode of his life served as a testament to his resilience and determination. He was fortunate not to be paralyzed by the disease, even though it had left him bedridden for a significant period. Later in his life, Robert Redford would go on to pay tribute to the medical breakthrough that helped eradicate polio. He co-directed a documentary titled Cathedrals of Culture, which focused on the Salk Institute for Biological Studies. In doing so, he honored the groundbreaking work of Dr. Jonas Salk, who had developed the polio vaccine that ultimately played a pivotal role in nearly eradicating this devastating disease. Robert Redford's upbringing in the Los Angeles area was marked by the dedicated efforts of his parents, Mother Martha and Father Charles. The Redford family faced the challenges of the Great Depression, a period of economic hardship in the United States. Charles, Redford's father, played a pivotal role in supporting the family during these trying times. He had initially worked as a milkman but later transitioned to become an accountant employed by Standard Oil. Charles Redford's commitment to his work was remarkable, but it came at a cost. He had to put in long hours to provide for his family, which left little time for family bonding and nurturing relationships. It was during this period that Charles's brother, David, stepped in to fill the void of a father figure in young Robert Redford's life. David Redford was a multifaceted and accomplished individual. He was not only a gifted football player, but also possessed the ability to speak four languages. His diverse interests and talents had a significant influence on Robert Redford. As a young boy, Robert spent a substantial amount of time with his uncle David, absorbing a wide range of experiences and insights. The time they spent together had a profound impact on the future superstar influencing his pursuit of various interests, including athletics and intellectual and artistic endeavors. David Redford's life took a significant turn when he became a member of the U.S. military. He served as an interpreter in General George S. Patton's Third Army during World War II, a position that underscored his linguistic skills and contribution to the war effort. Despite the demands of military service, David would make efforts to connect with his young nephew during his furloughs, engaging in activities like playing baseball, which provided valuable bonding moments. 
However, tragedy struck in the early 1940s when David Redford was called away to combat in Europe during World War II. He tragically lost his life in the Battle of the Bulge, a significant and brutal battle during the war. This loss had a profound and lasting impact on young Robert Redford. Devastated by the death of his beloved uncle, he had to grapple with the absence of grief support and a family environment that did not openly discuss or process such emotional challenges. In Redford's own words, the way the family dealt with it, it just wasn't talked about. It just happened and you didn't ask a lot of questions. This silence and stoic approach to coping with loss left a deep impression on the young actor and became a part of his personal history. In the 1950s, Van Nuys High School in Southern California was a place where two future screen legends had their academic beginnings, Robert Redford and Natalie Wood. During that time, Redford and Wood did not know each other as they were pursuing different paths. Redford was an athlete, while Wood had already made a name for herself in the entertainment industry, having been a child star in the beloved film Miracle on 34th Street and on the verge of receiving an Oscar nomination for her role in Rebel Without a Cause. However, their lives would eventually intersect, and they became close friends and creative collaborators during the 1960s. They shared the screen in movies like Inside Daisy Clover and This Property is Condemned, showcasing their acting talents and chemistry. Wood even made a cameo appearance in Redford's film The Candidate. Their friendship went beyond the silver screen, as Redford had the honor of being the best man at one of Wood's weddings. Redford expressed his fondness for Wood, saying, I only wish our paths could have crossed again. Tragically, such a reunion would never come to pass. In 1981, Natalie Wood, who had a known fear of water, met a tragic and mysterious end. She drowned after leaving a yacht where she had been partying with her husband, Robert Wagner, near Catalina Island off the coast of California. The circumstances surrounding her death remained murky and controversial even more than 40 years later. Natalie Wood's untimely passing marked the end of a remarkable career and life. She was just 43 years old at the time of her tragic and still enigmatic demise, leaving behind a legacy as a talented and beloved actress in the annals of Hollywood history. Back to Redford, after recovering from a childhood bout of polio, Robert Redford, a young boy at the time, faced another profound and heartbreaking family tragedy that would leave a lasting impact on his life. When Redford was just 10 years old, his mother, Martha Redford, gave birth to twin girls. This event, which should have been a moment of joy, was marked by medical complications and a heartbreaking outcome. Robert Redford revealed in a speech at the Sundance Film Festival Utah Women's Leadership Celebration, as reported by Closer Weekly, that his mother's doctor had advised against the pregnancy. This was due to the fact that Robert Redford's own birth had been a medically troublesome one likely raising concerns about the risks associated with another pregnancy. Despite the doctor's warnings, Martha Redford was determined to have the family she had always desired. Tragically, the twins born to her did not survive for long, and they passed away shortly after birth. This heart-wrenching loss was a significant emotional blow to the Redford family, and it marked the beginning of a series of challenges that would shape their lives. During this chaotic and traumatic medical episode, Martha Redford developed a blood disorder, which would prove to be a persistent and troublesome condition. This blood disorder remained with her for years, becoming a constant source of concern and health issues. Ultimately, it would lead to a hemorrhage that had devastating consequences. In 1955, when Martha Redford was 40 years old, she tragically succumbed to the effects of this hemorrhage, resulting in her untimely death. At the time of her passing, her son Robert Redford was just 18 years old, and he had already endured a great deal of hardship and loss in his young life. In addition, the post-World War II America of Robert Redford's childhood was marked by significant racial tensions and racism, and these social challenges would deeply impact his formative years. 
Redford grew up in Southern California during this period, and he found himself caught in the crosshairs of race-related gang conflicts and bullying. One of the individuals who targeted Redford was a young man named Felix, a member of a group known as the Patchucks. It appeared that Felix singled out Redford, possibly due to his attending a good school, excelling in track, and enjoying popularity with the girls. Redford recounted his experiences, stating, There was a kid called Felix who picked on me, probably because I went to a good school, I was good at track and popular with the girls, and he beat up on me. Redford, in order to cope with this adversity and protect himself, had to toughen up quickly, a survival mechanism in the face of bullying and intimidation. At one point, the situation escalated to a dangerous level when some of the individuals associated with the bullying forces persuaded a teenage Redford to join them on the rooftop of a building. The challenge they presented was reckless and potentially life-threatening as they encouraged him to jump off the roof to prove his toughness and machismo. Redford, eager to fit in and establish his reputation, accepted this perilous dare. However, the leap from the rooftop nearly cost him his life, and this traumatic incident would stay with him as a stark reminder of the dangers he faced during his youth. As Redford continued to grow, he became involved in a series of risky and rebellious behaviors, he ventured into experimenting with substances like hashish and marijuana, becoming part of the counterculture of the time. Additionally, he became entangled in the semi-legal, if not illegal, drag-racing subculture that was prevalent in Santa Barbara, California, during the early 1950s. This subculture was characterized by high-speed and often dangerous car races on the streets. One particularly perilous incident from this period involved Redford crashing his car while driving at a staggering speed of 90 miles per hour. Miraculously, he survived this harrowing accident, but he was left with a profound awareness of the fragility of life. Robert Redford's journey from high school to the University of Colorado at Boulder was marked by both promise and a series of personal challenges. According to his authorized biography, he graduated from Van Nuys High School in 1954 with adequate grades. But what truly stood out was his impressive athletic record. This prowess on the field secured him an acceptance to the University of Colorado at Boulder, primarily due to the university's baseball program, which greatly impressed Redford. There were even murmurs of a potential sports scholarship if he continued to excel in baseball. However, once he set foot on the campus and classes began, Redford underwent a significant shift in focus. Instead of pursuing his baseball ambitions, he turned his attention to the world of art. This decision marked a pivotal moment in his life, as it altered the course of his academic and personal journey. Initially, Redford faced challenges in making friends and finding his place in the university community. He eventually found camaraderie with a senior member of the Kappa Sigma fraternity, which helped him break out of his self-imposed isolation. This newfound socialization not only helped him establish connections, but also had a positive impact on his artistic output. However, this positive change also had a downside. Redford soon found himself immersed in the campus drinking circles. He began to indulge in heavy alcohol consumption, engaging in pranks, and prioritizing activities like drag racing and riding motorcycles over his academic responsibilities. NPR reported that his focus shifted away from studying, and his behavior became increasingly erratic. Redford's troubles compounded following the tragic death of his mother when he was just 18 years old. This devastating loss led him to use alcohol as a coping mechanism, intensifying his drinking habits. Ultimately, his excessive drinking led to the loss of his baseball scholarship, which had initially provided him with the opportunity to attend the University of Colorado. Due to the loss of his scholarship, Redford was unable to continue his college education, and the university asked him to leave. This marked a turning point in his life as he embarked on a new path that would eventually lead him to a successful career in the entertainment industry. 
ultimately becoming one of Hollywood's most iconic actors and filmmakers. Robert Redford also went through an unhappy marriage with a lot of pain surrounding him. In 1958, Robert Redford married Lola Van Wagenen, a historian based in Los Angeles. Their relationship took an unconventional turn as they eloped and promptly relocated to New York. In the bustling city, Redford pursued his studies at the Pratt Institute while also immersing himself in the world of acting. It was in this dynamic and evolving chapter of his life that he and Lola began to build their family. By 1959, the Redfords had welcomed their first child, a son named Scott. Tragically, this joyous beginning was marred by an unspeakable loss. At the tender age of just 10 weeks, Scott Redford succumbed to sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, also known as crib death. SIDS is a mysterious and still poorly understood condition where an apparently healthy infant dies unexpectedly, usually during sleep. This heartbreaking loss took a heavy toll on the young couple. Redford, in a rare moment of vulnerability, shared his pain with People magazine in 1998, saying, That was a tough hit. It was our first child. We were in New York, and we were broke. It was really tough. Robert Redford, known for his quiet and reserved nature, chose not to extensively discuss this devastating event over the years. Instead, he channeled his grief into a more private and compassionate response. He quietly worked to raise funds for research aimed at understanding the causes of SIDS, highlighting his determination to contribute to the understanding and prevention of a condition that had profoundly affected his own life and the lives of many others. Following the tragic loss of their first child, Scott, Robert Redford and Lola Van Wagenen went on to build a large and resilient family. Their subsequent children included James, often referred to as Jamie, as well as Shauna and Amy Redford. The Redford family's story was marked by both joy and health challenges, with Jamie facing significant hurdles throughout his life. Shortly after Jamie's birth, he was diagnosed with a severe and potentially life-threatening condition known as hyaline membrane disease, a respiratory disorder affecting infants. Medical professionals gave him a slim 40% chance of survival. Fortunately, Jamie defied the odds and recovered from this early health scare. However, Jamie's health struggles were far from over. He encountered a series of medical challenges that suffered the furies, as his father Robert Redford put it. These issues included colitis, a chronic digestive condition characterized by inflammation of the colon. This condition led to recurring infections and problems with blood flow. The complications arising from colitis ultimately culminated in a diagnosis of cirrhosis, a condition characterized by scarring and damage to the liver. In 1993, at the young age of 31, Jamie Redford underwent a life-saving liver transplant. However, despite this critical procedure, his health issues persisted, and he had to undergo yet another liver transplant. Throughout this trying period, Robert Redford demonstrated unwavering support for his son. Despite his busy schedule filming Quiz Show in New York, he made it a point to fly out to Omaha every weekend to be by Jamie's side during his hospitalization. The family's resilience and dedication to Jamie's well-being were evident during these challenging times. Thankfully, Jamie Redford slowly but steadily recovered after the second liver transplant, although he still had to grapple with serious complications. Despite the numerous health challenges he faced, Jamie continued to persevere and went on to have a successful career as a filmmaker and producer, spanning three more decades. However, in 2020, Jamie Redford's life took another heartbreaking turn. He succumbed to bile duct cancer at the age of 58, marking the end of a life marked by both resilience and personal triumph over substantial health obstacles. Robert Redford's eldest daughter, Shauna Redford, was born in 1961 and went on to become an artist. However, she found herself connected to a tragic and unsettling story in the early 1980s. Shauna's college sweetheart during her time at the University of Colorado was a journalism student named Sid Wells. 
Their relationship took a distressing turn in January 1983. In that fateful month, Sid Wells had rented out a room in his apartment to a man named Thane Smyka. Tragically, less than eight months later, Sid was discovered dead, having been fatally shot in the head. The police arrested Thane Smyka as a suspect, but he was subsequently released due to a lack of compelling evidence of his guilt. Following his release, Smyka relocated to California, and his car, abandoned with no fingerprints found anywhere on it, was discovered in Beverly Hills in 1986. Strikingly, Smyka seemingly disappeared without a trace and was never heard from again. The case remained unsolved for many years, leaving the Wells family in agony and uncertainty. However, a significant breakthrough occurred in 2010 when new ballistic and forensic evidence emerged, pointing to Smyka as the prime suspect. A warrant for his arrest was issued, but Smyka remained elusive and the murder case officially remained unsolved. During this tumultuous time, the Redford family faced another harrowing incident. Just eight months after Sid Wells' tragic death, Shauna Redford experienced a life-threatening accident. She was driving her Ford Bronco near Salt Lake City when she lost control of the vehicle, causing it to plunge into the icy waters of the Jordan River. Fortunately, a local hero named Doreen Stalker Rivers witnessed the accident and acted swiftly, diving into the river to rescue Shauna. Rivers pulled her to safety just as she was losing consciousness. Robert Redford expressed his profound gratitude by publicly thanking Doreen Stalker Rivers and even inviting her to the premiere of his film The Natural in 1984. The production of the movie had been temporarily halted so that Redford could attend Sid Wells' funeral, highlighting the deep impact of the tragic events on the Redford family. Robert Redford's marriage to Lola Van Wagenen, which endured for many years, stood as one of the longest-lasting unions among Hollywood's often short-lived marriages. The couple's journey began in 1958, long before Redford had achieved fame and fortune as an actor and filmmaker. Their relationship was an enduring one, even though it had its share of challenges, and it began with a somewhat unconventional motive. Redford's decision to marry Lola was influenced in part by a desire to prove himself to his family, he revealed that his family had concerns about his future, fearing that he might go astray, fail to achieve anything significant, or meet an early demise. To counter these doubts, he wanted to demonstrate that he could lead a stable and successful life. He married Lola Van Wagenen with this goal in mind, despite the fact that the couple had a modest financial standing, with only $300 to their name at the time of their wedding. Over nearly three decades of marriage, Robert Redford and Lola Van Wagenen raised three children to adulthood. However, their long-standing relationship eventually came to an end, and they divorced in 1985. In the aftermath of the divorce, Redford admitted that he felt somewhat adrift in life, as it was a significant change in his personal circumstances. Following the end of his marriage to Lola, Robert Redford had brief relationships with actor Sonia Braga and costume designer Kathy O'Rear. However, he would ultimately find love once again. In 1996, he crossed paths with Billy Sagars, an artist who was about 20 years his junior. Their connection deepened over time, and in 2009, they decided to take the plunge and marry, marking a new chapter in Redford's personal life. What do you think about Robert Redford's unfortunate life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.